Palace of Sanssouci, which roughly translates as carefree, was built in 1745 above terraced vineyards as a summer residence for Prussian King Frederick the Great. He didn't want the surrounding park to be merely scenic, it was designed to be useful too. Its vineyards, fruit and fig trees still flourish today. In the past, there was even greater abundance. There were apple and pear trees that have been replaced with yews. And there were walnut and chestnut trees on the sides of the terraces. There were even pineapples and strawberry fields. And as you can see behind me, the vines and fig trees were in greenhouses, so they could be harvested earlier. The park remains a major tourist attraction. Several eye-catching architectural features are scattered around the grounds. The white dome of the castle on Peacock Island is visible in the distance above the treetops. Fraueninsel, as it's known in German, is idyllically situated in southwest Berlin and can only be reached by ferry. It was acquired in 1793 by Frederick William II, Frederick the Great's successor, who had the castle built for himself and his mistress. His successor, Frederick William III, introduced a menagerie for exotic animals, later transferring all the animals to the Berlin Zoo. Only peacocks and some rare birds remain on the island today. In the early 19th century, a stay in Italy prompted Prince Charles of Prussia to have the Glienicke Manor converted into a neoclassical palace with a landscaped garden. In 1990, the palaces and parks of Potsdam and Berlin, created during centuries of Prussian rulers, were inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Over on the German-Polish border, Muskau Park on the river Nysa is less structured, but has its own verdant charm. In fact, it was also meticulously planned, laid out in the style of an English garden in 1815 by Prince Hermann von Puckler Moscow, a well-traveled nobleman who was not only a writer, but a landscape gardener. After the Second World War, the river marked the border between Germany and Poland, with most of the park in Poland. As German-Polish relations improved in the 1990s, the restoration of the park became a focus of pioneering cross-border cooperation. First of all, the meadows were restored and the overgrowth reduced so that the views could be enjoyed once again. Historical pathways were relayed so that visitors can walk through the grounds again. And of course, that included the rebuilding of the double bridge across the river Nysa in 2003. These days, the park has been restored to its former glory and looks pretty much as romantic and unspoiled as its designer envisioned it. The dessau verlitz garden realm was created in the late 18th century under the regency of Duke Leopold III of Anhalt-Dessau. Like Muskau Park, it's inspired by the traditional English garden. As a young man, he was keen to move to England, but he wasn't allowed to. He was obliged to become Prince of Anhalt-Dessau and then Duke of Anhalt-Dessau. So what he did was bring England to Germany. He created an English garden here in Wörlitz. It was one of the first and largest English parks outside of Britain. The garden realm wasn't intended to be enjoyed by nobility only. Leopold's vision was a park and a palace for everyone. Its design reflected his interest in the ancient world and in enlightenment. From Potsdam to Muskau Park and Wurlitz, 
the Prussian palaces and gardens express an ideal of harmony between man and nature. <laughs> 